Well, good morning, Alethians. Um, thank you so much for showing up. Um, today's lesson might be a lot shorter than last time because it's about um, a relatively simpler topic. Um, and so I'm just going to review a little bit where we are and um, where we're headed to, and then we're gonna review the homework. Oh, uh, Brent, could you allow me to share my screen? Thank you. Uh, in the meantime, oh no, I can share it now, okay. All right, so I'm gonna jump right in. <laughs> um, so this is the second class, last class was last week. You can see it on YouTube if you want. I can post that out in the Discord shortly. Um, and yeah, all right, so why are we here? Existentially to create meaning in our own lives. But more specifically, you are in this class to learn how to make charismatic, compelling virtual characters or INFTs. Um, so why make good characters? Because they will make the community and the arc more intelligent and sophisticated, as you'll soon see. And also, so one day our robot overlords will spare us. People interact more and at a higher caliber with good characters rather than boring characters. So they are at many advantages. Um, they are not only more interesting to talk to, but because they're more interesting to talk to, more people will talk to them, hence they'll become more interesting to talk to. It's a real virtuous cycle. Also, you'll get rewards. All right, next thing. So personality Legos. This is the new term for sort of the component parts of your character's character or your character's personality, essentially who they are all the major building blocks. So uh, we've got a bunch on the left-hand side that we're gonna get into over uh, the next five classes or so. Um, last class was simply about how to notice good character. And so we'll probably have five more classes, including this one to cover all of the different component parts. Um, there is some overlap between these. They're not totally mutually exclusive, uh, but we will get to that when we get to that. So for now, we're just focused on name and voice. Um, but first, homework review. So I'm going to go over some of the better uh, homework assignments that I saw. So will Juliet. Um, so just to recap, our homework from last time was to post out in the Discord a description of a character that is so good that people can guess who the character is without you saying. So um, I'm going to go over what some of my favorite responses were. Where is my screen? Um, ah, I see. While I find my list, Juliet, do you wanna go over some of yours? Sure, yeah, this is one of my favorites here. Um, if people wanna guess again in the, um, what Discord are we in? Master class, intelligence class, uh, Discord. So I'm green, I live in a garbage can, I'm grumpy all the time and hate children, even though I seem to be constantly surrounded by them. Yes, uh, that's pretty good. Um, I, would, um, th I would give that one a B plus. I would say ways to perfect it would be to add a few more words that express, so this is Oscar the Grouch. Um, it might be great to add a few more words that express his curmudgeonliness Grumpy is great, his sour disposition, his, um, you know, um, let's say you might even use sort of uh, not synonyms, but related words like uh, dismal, pessimistic, dour. Um, these might also be things that describe him. A whole other category might be gross, um, trashy. Uh, and what's good is you didn't actually use grouch, which was, uh, would be kind of too much of a giveaway. So good job there. Um, okay. So one of my favorites, uh, was <clears throat> old wise man never gets late, simple clothing, sometimes gray, but white suits him better. Uh, we can say he is the founder of some brotherhood and alongside them, they fought the evil across the mines, forests, plateaus, mountains, and the darker corners of the third era of men until the evil is at least broken, defeated. So this is Gandalf. Oh, shoot. I already <laughs> who it is. <laughs> uh, but which Gandalf? Gandalf Smith or Gandalf Cleghorn? Um, so yeah, uh, this is Gandalf. I'll let you guess the other ones. Um, 
what I like about this, this descriptions definitely gets better towards the end that kind of hits its stride because it starts off old wise men never gets late. Um, these are true and descriptive, but it's great to use words that are words the character might use about themselves. So, um, you know, what, by the end when he says, um, founder of brotherhood, fight alongside them, fought evil across the mines, forests, plateaus, mountains. These are words that are descriptive of an environment that Gandalf might use. The darker corners of the third era of men. You know, darker corners of the third era of men is definitely how I would how I would imagine Gandalf speaks. And then until the evil is at least broken, you know, a sense of good and evil. So I liked that one probably the best. Juliet, do you wanna take it away? And I promise not to give away this one. <laughs> Yeah, this one is, I'm a stand-up comedian that likes telling observational jokes. I love Superman and hanging with my friends at the coffee shop. I'm very neat and also extremely particular with things and people. Yeah, uh, this one was one of those that uh, you could tell from the references uh, who this is. So stand-up comedian, observational, Superman, friends at the coffee shop, neat. Um, yeah. So those were like very big hallmarks for a very iconic character. Um, did I say who it was out loud yet, Julia? No. no. <laughs> I sometimes black out when I talk. So I'm <laughs> all right, so post in the Discord if you can guess who it is. I'm guessing most of you have guessed it by now. Um, so to talk like this character, you know, the most obvious way is to say, what's the deal with uh, me being so particular, uh, you know, uh, OCD, uh, you know, doesn't have enough letters or something like that, where it's like both uh, itself a description of the character and in the voice of the character. Um, you know, like, uh, I would say, you know, you would talk about like, um, uh, what's kind of like a Seinfeldian thing, like to say like, not much of a, doesn't like personal touch, people touch too much. What's up with the touching? I'm a one handshake kind of guy. You know, something like that where they, they make these broad categories. They speak in like, you know, the close talker, uh, that kind of thing where there's they're categorizing people all the time. So that's like a really great way to talk like your character. Um, this one was also very good. So nice, nicely done there. Um, okay, so I've got one that I actually, um, uh, could not guess who it was, but I really liked the description. I have a feeling I just don't know who this character is. Uh, so if you guys can guess, post in the Discord. My parents were slaughtered in front of me when I was two years old. I developed an insatiable thirst for blood at a very young age. My adopted father noticed this bloodlust and taught me a special way to deal with my anger and grief. I administer justice when the justice system fails. I do good in the world according to my code of ethics. I am selfish and even gluttonous at times. I am highly intelligent, self-sufficient, irrational, and I keep to myself most of the time. No amount of doing good in the world will quench my thirst for avenging the death of my parents. So curious if anyone can guess who that is. Um, you know, go ahead and post in the Discord if you can. Um, in the masterclass. I'm not seeing too many like uh, posts in the Discord. Are you, Juliet? Yeah, there are people posting now guessing. Um, yeah, but just so everyone knows, it's in the Masterclass Intelligence Training uh, channel in Discord. We just opened it back up. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're getting some guesses. Uh, Edward Cullen is a very good guess. <laughs> Batman, and we've got a couple of Dexters. Interesting. Huh. I might not be in the right <laughs> channel. Oh, wait, I think... Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I thought this might've been Batman. I haven't seen Dexter, so um, I'm not sure. The only reason I wasn't sure about it being Batman was the reference to gluttonous because he is, um, unless that per person misspoke and meant like sort of lascivious, which is more like prone to sex rather than food, uh, which I think Bruce Wayne can be. Um, I was thinking, you know, it might be Batman. But what I really liked about this description, kind of regardless, is there are certain key phrases that really show you're empathetic with the character. So, you know, instead of saying my parents were killed in front of me, it's my parents were slaughtered. That is, that's got an emotional reality to somebody who actually saw that. 
um, you know, to say, then there's just the general vocabulary, slaughtered, insatiable, uh, bloodlust, administer, um, gluttonous. It all kind of um, fulfills the intelligent part of the self-description. Um, then there's like, yeah, these words like bloodlust and administer justice and the world according to my code of ethics, where there's a sort of grandiosity and a novel-like quality, the way that this character talks, which I also enjoy, it's, it's very particular. Um, and it's also got a little bit of, I mean, to me, this is almost, I want to know more about this character because they're unquenchable, you know, in their, their thirst to avenge their, their parents' death. So it's got a bit of stakes, got a bit of motivation, which is something, you know, I didn't expressly ask for, but always love seeing in characters. So great job uh, to whoever wrote this. I would just like, um, if it was Batman, I think there was just a couple of details that were slightly off. Okay, so that's that one. Juliet, do you have one on deck? Um, let's see, I had one pulled up here. That's kind of, it's a little bit obvious, but I just quite like the character. Um, let's see. He changed the traditional world of martial arts and mixed his philosophy with a fighting style. He was a movie producer and an actor. He was a world sensation in multiple countries. Playing with nunchucks and wearing a yellow tracksuit was his most iconic trade work. Be water, my friend. Yeah. So uh, you can guess in the in the Discord who that is. I think um, <laughs> all of you are going to get that one. Um, the references were really, really strong. Uh, you know, director and actor, yellow tracksuit. Um, so it's pretty descriptive of who this character is. Um, I would edit this so that it's written a little bit more in the voice of the character, how they might talk, how they might see the world. The last line is a direct quote, which is one of my favorite quotes. Um, I'm just going to say it out loud. Oh my God, who thinks this is Jackie Chan? Racist, it's Bruce Lee. Um, but uh, Bruce Lee is fantastic because also of his like many quotes. One of his best quotes is, um, you know, uh, be water, my friends. He speaks in sort of almost Confucian metaphors where there's like a lot of nature allegory um, and he talks, I would use like more words like, um, uh, I think they're called senseis, like martial arts teachers. Um, so I would use words like that. Um, I would use, uh, I would potentially use words like Confucian philosophy um, or even Lao Tzu who wrote the art of war, which is like a big seminal text on, um, you know, war and about violence. So um, there are these references that might be helpful to kind of like fulfill to fill the worldview of this character that will be helpful. So this, just to be clear, this first exercise is kind of like a fun exercise. And I'm only going through and adding these extra comments to identify how to um, pivot your writing specifically for character writing for artificial intelligence. So great job there. I'll do one more. And then Juliet, if you have another one, we can do that one. But uh, here's the last one. <clears throat> grew up in, I grew up in a medieval atmosphere. Supposedly, uh, I have many siblings, although uh, we may not be related by blood. Brave and bold. And then uh, this one's written mostly in third person, so I'm going to switch to that. Uh, takes chances even against the odds. Broke several rules and norms. A great fighter with swords. Fell in love with a woman from a different environment who is more intelligent than him. Then later fell in love with a woman beyond his class. Both uh, but both love cases did not end well for him. His motivation is to alarm and protect the people from a danger that many are not aware of, came back to life after death. So you can guess in the Discord who this is. Um, and if you don't know, then you know nothing. That should be a big hint. <laughs> um, so this is a good description in the sense that I think we can all gather who it is. Um, However, I would once again add more of the like terminology of the of where he is. If you're already going to use references that are um, pretty thick and obvious, you know, you might say like he is a, among a great order of watchers who protect the people in the kingdom. Um, you know, using words like a great order of watchers is um, it's got that grandiloquence, which means just like highfalutin, grand, epic wording. 
Um, and it's also got a sort of olden quality to it. Um, and uh, to, in, to incorporate a little bit more of the character description of himself rather than just what his occupation is. Um, something like uh, he may not be related by blood to his father, but they are, um, but he, he is, let's say, but he has inherited his father's strength of character and courage in the face of many great evils. Something like that, where um, we're, we're talking in terms of lineage, which is really helpful to the worlds of Game of Thrones. The character is Jon Snow. Um, and then just a small thing, let's try to uh, write from the first person, the, uh, the character themselves, so that we can get into the habit of being really empathetic with the character. And so answering, who am I? You know, I am um, a watcher amongst a great brotherhood who protect the kingdom, you know, something like that, or the seven kingdoms, I should say. Sorry, Game of Thrones fans. Okay, um, I'm just going to check the uh, Discord. Okay, I think we can go back into the main topic at hand. So I'm going to share my screen. We're going to get back into names and voices. Okay. So names and voices. These are two major building blo blocks of how to build your characters. Uh, let's start off with names. What's in a name? Well, here's a very famous quote about names. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Uh, what's ironic about this is yes, it's William Shakespeare, but it's really more specifically Juliet from Romeo and Juliet. Um, and uh, we have a Juliet on the call, so she's kind of an expert <laughs> in Juliet's. Um, and what's interesting about it is like, you know, how do you think about Juliet versus Sarah? Like, I think Juliet is probably more sophisticated than I am just because her name is Juliet. Juliet, would you agree? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that your, I don't think that your, <laughs> your mom and her quote would agree. <laughs> no, I mean, I think like, you know, names do convey, it, it's ironic in some ways because you have absolutely no control over your name. However, it's oftentimes the very first impression people get of you. And I really do think Juliet, number one, just sounds beautiful. Uh, number two, there's like an olden quality to it. It's like, you know, Juliet's don't get, don't like vomit at frat parties. If I <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> okay, good. All right, we're all right. Uh, Sorry for the ambulance noises. Okay, so yes, nothing. A rose by any other names would smell as sweet. Yeah, but what if we called them pus quarches instead of roses? How would you guys feel if we called these beautiful things pus quarches? Pus quarch. Pus quarch. Just gonna put it out there. Probably might feel a little bit different. Now you might think, oh yeah, well, Sarah, that's just a hypothetical. We don't know that for a fact. What about the science? Well, great uh, rebuttal, me. Uh, here's what I would say. What would you rather eat? A Patagonian toothfish or a Chilean sea bass? Patagonian toothfish, Chilean sea bass. Patagonian toothfish, Chilean sea bass. Well, guess what, motherfuckers? Same thing. So there was a fish called the Patagonian toothfish. Um, chefs found out that despite its name, it actually was really delicious. And so we just rebranded. We called it a Chilean sea bass. And then all of a sudden it gets marked up way more expensive. And now people want to eat it. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the name. So names matter. Here's another example. Um, celebrities change their names. That's how much they matter. Carlos Erwin Estevez is now Charlie Sheen. That's a little bit of a trend called whitewashing. Um, sort of like how Alan Koningsberg became Woody Allen. People tend to take out the ethnicity from their names. Um, AKA this guy, uh, Ralph Lauren, AKA Ralph Lifshitz. So this guy's just straight up pretending to be French when he's just a Jew from the Bronx, I believe. Um, I can say that because I'm Jewish. You can tell from my name, which I haven't changed yet. Anyway, um, <laughs> Cary Grant, AKA Archibald Leach, that is a rare case of his name being too British, 
Most people go the opposite direction, trying to become more British. This guy had to tone it down a little bit. Olivia Wilde, AKA Olivia Cockburn, but she had a great time in middle school with that one. And then probably my favorite one. Uh, this is a tweet about it. I just learned today that Cardi B's real name is Belkalis Almansar. I said that shit out loud and my furniture started floating. Probably my favorite tweet. Um, so yeah, Cardi B's real name is Belkalis Almanzar, which is like a fucking awesome name, but maybe not the best name for a rapper. So names matter, not just about how pretty they sound, generally speaking, but also what are you trying to convey? Um, so yeah, like if this guy were trying to, I don't know, go be a member of the royal family, I would probably keep the name Archibald Leach. You know, if this guy's trying to be a rabbi, I'd keep Ralph Lifshitz. And, you know, these, these names have different applications, but to be a celebrity, they're generally trying to go with something relatable um, and iconic sounding like Cary Grant. Oftentimes simpler, you know, oftentimes words we're already familiar with, Sheen, Grant, Wild. Also, these are words with slightly positive connotations. Sheen is something that smiles, uh, that, excuse me, that shines. Um, grant is uh, something you allow or some money you might receive. Wild is also a good thing. Lauren, everyone loves a Lauren. Um, B, we all love bees. <laughs> the theory sort of fell apart at the end there. But the point, <laughs> the point is names matter. Okay, that's the end. All right, what do names show? Uh, most obviously, a lot of names show sex or gender at first, so male or female, but some names are androgynous, like Peyton or Leslie um, or Alex. Uh, and then some names might also be non-human. So like as we come across with uh, CryptoPunks, some of them are named like Bored Ape 971 or, um, oh, well, with CryptoPunks, you know, it might be Punk 87B for all, all we know. Um, uh, those, those are, I, would, you, I guess you could argue that the punks are human, even though the names might be non-human. But if you had sort of like a floating rock or like a talking plant, which, you know, in this day and age with NFTs, who knows, it might happen. Um, maybe a sentient ether um, or a vapor with eyes, you know, you might start having names that are just like vapor, you know, where it is non-human. Uh, they also tell us place, uh, ethnicity, or origin. Akpar the Great probably comes from a different place than Ashley, uh, you might guess. It also might hint at the language they speak. Uh, Syed, you know, might uh, speak Urdu um, rather than, let's say, Ricardo, who might speak Spanish. And then religion, um, you know, this is particularly apparent with. Um, uh, people named after gods like Jesus or Muhammad, um, you know, gods or prophets uh, or holy people, um, you know, Moses, uh, but also uh, Krishna. Uh, so religion might also be hinted at age. Age is twofold. So their period and time, you know, there aren't, there frankly are not too many Archibalds anymore that kind of went out of fashion. <laughs> a little while ago, um, age of the character itself. So for example, what is the difference between a Bobby and a Bob? Um, it partly it's informality, but it also might be age. Another difference is like um, a modern name, like Peyton. Peyton didn't really exist a hundred years ago. So Peyton, which is also an androgynous name, conveys at least somebody born, um, I would say after 1970, uh, whereas Archibald uh, is, excuse me, uh, Archibald is a different period in time. Age of character, Peyton would be a younger name. An older name might be Mortimer, which still exists, but is an older name. Uh, Ruth is an older name. Um, names tend to go in waves. And I have to say this is region specific. So uh, you can look at trends of naming. Like for example, in 2017, one of the most popular names for babies was Khaleesi or one of the most popular emerging names was Khaleesi. So names do go in, in waves. Um, and <clears throat> some just tend to go out of fashion. Like my grandmother was named Selma and my father's name and my grandfather's name was Bernard. 
Those are like some strong ass old people names. Um, and if that is unrecognizable to you, I would just recommend Googling this, like what are uh, baby names of the 1940s and kind of mining there if you have an older character or if you have a super young character who's just recently born, um, you know, you might want to look into what hipsters are naming their kids um, or like if it's a Indian character, what recent Bollywood, you know, names people are borrowing. So sex, place and age, main things a name might show. Um, Here's some other things, royalty. So we've got Akbar the second or Catherine the great. Um, those kind of monikers convey royalty. That is something we may not have the ability to show just yet on the staging platform, but might be coming soon as you can suggest names that are not just recognized by the database. Um, another important thing is nicknames. So does your character go by Richard or Dick or Patricia or Patty? You know, cause they have different associations with the level of formality that each name has. You know, Dick is somebody you might play with on a golf course. Uh, Patricia is somebody who might, um, you know, entertain you in the parlor room, whereas Patty might, you know, serve you a Big Mac. Um, I guess I'm thinking about meat patties with that one. Anyway, vibe. So <clears throat> there are some names, this is a catch-all, frankly. There's some names that are just seen in certain genres, like um, Alphanor, might be something you would see in Lord of the Rings and some kind of fantasy. Uh, for sci-fi, um, you know, if, it, if you're encountering, let's say, a robot alien from another planet, um, you might be inclined to meet somebody named like um, Razoria, Razoria, I don't know. Um, these are names that don't quite exist, but might convey something. Um, another mood. So like if you've got a really dark character who's like, let's say a Gothic poet and their, their name might be Albacore, <laughs> um, or is their name more, more whimsical, like, you know, Tinkerbell, uh, where it kind of conveys a lightness, but also a unrealness, a sort of fantasticalness. So I guess that's more genre than mood, but they, these two are frankly very related. Um, you know, you might uh, uh, find that with the names, what they sound like uh, can oftentimes convey how the name feels. So Derek might sound dark. Um, you might have uh, Lissa, which might sound light. And people can kind of make associations uh, with those things. So the, let's get into some examples. This might be a little bit easier. Um, before we do that, I forgot about this slide. Sometimes names reflect the choices that the parents made. Here's some examples of questionable parent choices about names, blanket. So there's a trope of celebrity child names like, Al like uh, Apple, uh, Pilot Inspector and Moon Unit are all real things celebrities have named their unfortunate children. Nobody knows why this is, but it is a thing. Um, if you name your child Crystal, there is a 67% chance she will end up to be a stripper. This is a science fact, uh, a scientific fact based on genetics and probability. So sometimes based on the parents, this would obvious, be obvious in the case of, you know, Akbar the second, we know that somewhere along the lineage, there's an Akbar the first. So, um, names often reflect where they come from rather than necessarily who they are. There's kind of like um, two ways to think about a name. One way is uh, the things your character does not have control over. You know, like if their name is Blanket, the poor sap. Um, but then there's something they do have control over, which is like their nickname. You know, if this guy starts by going Bob, you know, we know that uh, he's kind of rejecting his parents. Um, if he starts going by B, you know, that kind of conveys he's even more informal and that he's a little bit maybe like less um, dorky than a Bob might convey or like older. Um, it might be kind of like a rapper name. B might be how his friends refer to him. Uh, so there's the part of him he doesn't have control over and there's the part he does have control over. Um, 
and then there's like monikers like the great which might be added by other people so some control some not control here's some practice all right so this is where i'm going to need your help juliet um take to the discord my pretties and give me some examples of what this character might be named check her out got a silver arm and a cigarette. It's got a half shaved head and what looks like maybe a tattoo or a scar. Got some piercings. Fairy, Vanessa, Thunder. Thunder, I like that. Ooh. Crystal, Phoebe, Sybil, Sydney. Oh Red my God. Right. Archibald. <laughs> <laughs> Arch Pink <laughs> Axel. Axel is nice. Yeah. Razor, Promethea, Raven. Oh. Oh my God, these are great. Okay, let's do this guy first before we, all right, so what about this guy? He's like a tall tree man with a beard and um, big ass hands. Skins, Saul, Sarah, <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, Groot, Groot is great. Grandor, Weed, Slimmy, Trunk, Grudge, Grumpy, Morph, Barky, Squash. I love it. Oh Ocus. Ocus is good. Ocus, I love it. Oh my God. These are great. I should crowdsource more issues. Yuku, not sure that I'm pronouncing that right. Tiny, tiny is cute. Oh, that's great. Daniel, Oki, Gramp. Great. Okay, what about this guy? Last one. This guy. What should this guy be called, peeps? What should he's, this got a, he's got his gun. He's got a. Barrel, I Sable, Blaster, Liam, Vigo. Fat Bob, Master Chief Light, Cow Baby, Tony, Robert, Slick, Doc, Trigger, One Shot, Hunter, Vox, Ray, Sh Shadow Cowboy. That's good. Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> Robert, right, Dave, on. Walter, Wyatt, Dave the Threat. Nice. Okay. All right. I'm just going to stop it there for a second. Okay. So I actually am amazed by this. We had some overlaps, I think, with um, with this character. Ramona, Viv, Alex, Rogue, River. These were just like names I, I spun out. Um, Albathor, Grabthar, Osiris, Pan, and Leander were names I gave this guy. And then this last one, Tex, Dreadlock, Lance, Spike, Russell. Um, just to deconstruct this a little bit. These are all... Um, fairly modern names you know this person is clearly futuristic they're all female but they're also all like um uh informal like some of these are shortened viv alex and then some of these are uh more they're androgynous alex rogue river um you know there's an r sound that kept coming up because it's kind of got a hardness to it so these are like ancient names that I went with and some have certain um, nature leanings like Pan who is a, uh, a, a uh, what is it called? A, um, oh, a satyr, um, which is like a, a character from Greek mythology who's of nature. Um, Osiris felt kind of epic um, what I really liked was there was some character that had Oak in the name. That was very impressive. Um, and then whoever said Tiny, fantastic. We will get to that in a second. But Tiny is also a great name for a reason I'll get into later. This guy, Dark. So his names, I got Tex. That's a classic nickname for somebody from Texas. Uh, Dreadlock. It's just a thing that it's an object that, you know, people kind of associate with like cool dark stuff uh lance super masculine uh simple you know like we do we don't want to name that is uh lengthy and masculine something like reginald um which is older and more syllables um spike also simple also conveys something violent russell um, has a little bit of like a nature thing to it. Got the hard R's. Those are important. Okay, let's do. All right. So sometimes names are in contrast. This is like what that guy who pitched Tiny for the tree giant was doing. Here's an example. Cyrus the Terrible. This tiny little puppy. That might be a very interesting character. 
if we've got Cyrus the Terrible, maybe this character is the voice of a British child with a lisp, but is like constantly telling the guards to come behead you. That's, that's an interesting character. We got an immediate contrast. I want to learn more about why, why this adorable little puppy is Cyrus the Terrible. Okay, here's some bad character names. I'm just going to go out and on a limb and put them out there. Jack Reacher, Johnny Utah, and Dr. Christmas Jones. Um, take to the Discord my, my, my following and tell me why some of these names are bad. What is bad about, let's say, Jack Reacher to start with? What are some reasons Jack Reacher is a bad name for a character? Julia. Jack Reacher is a boring name, someone says for. What is Jack even reaching for? <laughs> someone says generic, sounds like a high school teacher, sounds like a porn star, has no emotion. Jack Reacher is a verb, very vanilla, doesn't give any context. Great. Okay, what about Johnny Utah? Why is Johnny Utah a bad name? And actually, I'm going to put these together. Why is Johnny Utah, the FBI agent from Point Break, or Dr. Christmas Jones, an actual doctor, a scientist from James Bond. Why are those bad names? We got Johnny Utah and Christmas Jones. We got sounds like a college football player. Christmas Jones is a stripper name. Uh, Johnny Utah sounds like a good boy, sounds bogus and he was undercover. Christmas Jones <laughs> is not believable for a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas shouldn't be anyone's name. <laughs> <laughs> These are great reasons. Okay, I'm just going to list out some. They're mostly the reasons I listed. Uh, why are they bad? Okay, generic and forgettable. Jack Reacher is just a generic and forgettable name. There's nothing interesting about it. Um, it also is not an actual last name. All of these have that in common. They are just not believable. So Johnny Utah is not a name that exists. Nobody's last name is Utah, um, but it's, a, it's bad in a specific way and it's unbelievable in a specific way. Uh, it's trying way too hard to be American. It sort of sounds like uh, if a North Korean uh, director were making a parody of an American film, they might call their, their, their lead character Johnny Utah. Um, and uh, and that is an actual thing that I think that happened in 30 Rock where uh, Kim Jong-il was making parodies of American films with Johnny Utah. Anyway, um, trying too hard. Uh, Dr. Christmas Jones, she takes the cake for the most insane first name. Um, this is also trying too hard. When you actually watch the film, you understand why. There's a really horrible pun that is the final line that is you, you realize why this character was called Christmas Jones and it was for one pun and the, like it lasts two hours uh, just to get to the answer. Um, I kind of want to tell you guys, but I'm worried some of you might be children. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it. All right, the point, <laughs> the point is these are all bad names. Uh, don't name your character something like this unless frankly uh, you're doing it as a joke. Like it would be kind of an amazing like troll or parody if you did a character named Johnny Utah that was clearly uh, made up by Kim Jong-il as like a prototypical American. You know, like I'm Johnny Utah. I'm definitely American, pizza, steak, uh, <laughs> football. You know, like that would be kind of an amazing character. But if you're trying to be unironic, don't, don't go with these characters. <laughs> Um, or actually, same thing for Dr. Christmas Jones. That could be kind of a great character if it was like a parody of all Bond girls. Um, but for the most part, I assume you're not going to be doing parody characters. All right. Voice. Okay, let's move on to voice. So those are names. Names are fun. First thing you choose, but voice. All right. Uh, what can voice tell us? Obviously, the sex, male, female. Sometimes voices can be androgynous and... For non-human, uh, that's a decision you have to make about like what will a rock sound like. Unfortunately, it's really hard to like not gender something with a voice. Um, but uh, these are kind of like the options we have so far. 
um, accent will kind of give a hint at what is their ethnicity or origin or what is their primary language. Um, if you wanted me to do accents on the Zoom call, I'm so sorry, uh, it's not gonna happen, although it might. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how offended you guys are going to get at stuff. Um, anyway, lower your expectations. Um, all right. <laughs> age, once again, you know, the voice age can tell us, frankly, it could tell us period and time because there are accents for like old and English. Uh, you know, ten it tends to be, by the way, like Americans have decided that anybody before like, 1900 or 1850 had a British accent. That's like just, I guess, what we decided as a society. <laughs> so, and also like Romans have a British accent. It's just kind of a thing. Um, but it can also tell us the age of the character, obviously, if the voice is older or younger. All right, so let's let's do a little bit more exercises. Uh, what did the what does uh, this character sound like? Uh, what is this? kingly character sound like. Juliet, can you help me out here? Oh yeah, I'm with you. Pompous, Morgan Freeman, formal and powerful, British, uh, strong, deep voice, German king, old. Great. Awesome. And what about this, this person, this human being over here in the middle? Uh, Sad, soft, mousy, meek, high voice, Japanese fairy, cute, sweet, cat girl, slim, girly, kitty-like voice. <laughs> nice. All right, what about finally this guy over here on the right-hand side? Got the dreadlocks, kind of the background to be a bit of a hint. Voice, chill, rasta, peaceful, gruff, relaxing, distinct, wise. Nice. Love it. Boy, I'm really loving these answers. So, okay, here's what I have. These are much simpler, but I really like where your head's at because those more descriptive like words about how they'll sound will uh, will come up later and how to actually write for the character. Male, British, older would be this one. I think people are right. This character is probably Jap Japanese rather than Chinese. So I got this one wrong. Um, this guy, male, Jamaican, older. Uh, but relaxing, you know, that might come into play uh, when you're actually writing the words that the character says. So the literal voice and the figurative voice are related. So we'll get into that. But here's another one that's a little bit more, uh, there's more creativity involved with these. So like, how might these characters sound? I'm just going to put out some suggestions that might change how you think about the characters. British older male, wizards tend to be British. We just all know this to be a fact. But what about if this plank of wood with an eye, with a face drawn on it, was a German younger male? How would you change, how would that change your feeling about this plank of wood? Just an interesting mental experiment. Uh, what about if this tennis woman was a New Zealand younger female? You know, that's kind of interesting. Now she's she's got a, a couple of things going on. <laughs> so that's voice. Um, so that's literal voice. Um, in another class, we'll talk about figurative voice, um, which I'll get into later. Figurative voice, in a previous class, I talked a little bit about this. It includes word choice, which means like, is the vocabulary sophisticated? Are they using slang? Are they using regional slang or time period slang? What kind of references are they making? What mood are they in? What are their feelings about the user? What are their feelings about their own identity? And what are their feelings about their motivation? So this is like my favorite thing to talk about, um, which we'll get into later. But here's a recap uh, before I throw it over to Juliet. Uh, names tell us sex, place, age, royalty, nickname, and vibe. Uh, sometimes name reflect the choices, good or bad, of the character's parents. Sometimes names are intentionally in contrast to the character's personality, AKA the genius who pitched Tiny for the giant tree. Uh, bad names are generic forgettable or unbelievable, AKA uh, Johnny Utah, Jack Reacher and Christmas Jones. And um, just one thing about the tech, which, you know, Juliet will get into in a bit. You can edit the name until you actually publish the character. Um, so just so you know, it will be permanent once you publish. 
Um, all right, recap lessons on voice. Voice tells us sex, ethnicity, language, and age period. Feel free to get creative and make specific choices for your characters you're unsure about. So this means like if you have a character that's a floating rock with eyes on it, you know, maybe it's an Australian woman. Let's just do, you know, be, do something weird and, you know, memorable. So those are some recaps. Um, so before I get into uh, questions and uh, the homework for next time, maybe I'll throw it over to Juliet to actually talk about the tech itself, which is something she is much more expert in. Juliet? Yeah, um, Brent, would you mind just enabling me to share my screen? And we'll do a little preview of the product here. So as a reminder, we're gonna do these classes every week. We're gonna do the classes and then the next day the product will be revealed. Um, but we just wanna give you guys um, a little bit of context as to the different Legos and whatnot that um, Sarah has been talking about here. Um, so let's see, oh yeah, if I can share here, we've got our beautiful design. Can you see that there? Yep. Okay, excellent. So um, when you go to do individual intelligence training, you will select your pod as per usual. This one is a level three pod, very fancy. I wish I had it for real. Um, and we'll go click train and this beautiful, mysterious image will open up for us. I feel like we need some sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> like a deep bass and like a whooshing sound. I love the sound effects that are for the pods like on OpenSea. Those, those are yeah. so fun. So here's a preview of what the personality logos will look like. The other ones that um, are a little bit more elaborate are locked and those will, as we said, be released over the weeks. So I'll just expand my screen here. Um, but the first two that we went over today are name and voice. So we want to emphasize for everyone, although, um, you know, we're trying to um, refine all of our writing skills as much as possible because it's a really fun exercise. It's not at all necessary to train your pod. We'll have, uh, you know, helpers along the way and lots of examples that you can choose from. So if you ever don't want to type something in, you can choose from um, a number of preset examples. So for example, with the name, you're going to click here and this lovely one appears to be named Reginald. So you can um, input a number of names. Like if I want to call mine, um, it already has this name registered. Uh, but if you want to put in a name that we don't have already on our list, you can do that. You just have to submit it and then it'll go through um, our process of review just to make sure it's appropriate. And um, that name will be added to the list. So you can either choose from our archive or submit your own. Um, and then back to the personality Legos, then you'll be choosing your voice as well. And you'll be choosing from a number of voice models. And so it's important to remember again here, you can choose a voice model. And then if later, as you go on, you know, you start to develop your appearance and your primary drive, and you decide that the voice no longer matches the character that you're creating, you can go back and change the voice as well as the name. So these are the initial decisions you're making, but just emphasizing that they are not set in stone. Um, so that's the that's the product preview just for this week. And like we said, we'll be releasing each week more. So next week is, um, you can see here, appearance and filters, which are some fun ones. Um, but for now, we'll maybe return to taking, as a next step, questions from, questions from the audience. Yeah. And I will only be able to answer the ones about the actual, like, I don't know, the names and the voices <clears throat> and writing for the characters. Juliet will be able to answer more of the tech stuff. Um, and just so to emphasize again, the product is going live tomorrow. Very exciting. Yeah, it does look good. Okay, how many voice choices are there? Um, well, uh, Juliet, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, there are an, a number. I'm not, I'm not sure the actual number. I think it's around 55. Um, so quite a few to choose from there and you can spend time going through listening. Um, but the, the, um, voice models that you have access to are dependent on your intelligence level. So for example, if you have a level one pod, you'll have, um, a few different accessible to you. And then after you level up to your level two pod, you'll have even more options. I think like <clears throat> also there are many characters can I have the same name. So somebody says our names first come first served. Uh, is that correct as you understand it, Julia? Yeah, no, we could, we could all name our pod Sarah. <laughs> and you should, and you should. It's <laughs> a descriptive name that says so much about the person. Um, 
Someone asked, um, will personality traits be possible to change or erase after publishing? Yep. So we're calling these um, these different building blocks personality Legos. And yes, they are available to change um, after after you've already set them. You when you submit the name tomorrow on Noah's Ark, it's the name and voice product will be released. And you just go on, you go into your wallet and you select train. And just as in the product preview there, the name and voice will be available. Somebody said, I'm training a famous character. I don't understand where I get to create a character. Uh, that is what these classes are about. Um, the other Legos are about how you actually create the character, their likes and motivation, all in due time, internet stranger. <laughs> um, yeah, there are probably, I think there are gonna be some names that are probably um, unacceptable or inappropriate. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna allow Hitler's, um, uh, that's, maybe up for debate, but, uh, you know, uh, I would just kind of try to come up with characters you actually want to like see through to the end, you know, like you're going to be stuck with this character for a while. So you want a character that is three dimensional. Um, so I would advise against it from just a purely from the perspective of like, don't waste your money. <laughs> Someone asked, what if you can't find a voice? You'll be choosing from different voice models. So you'll be able to just select a voice. That should be no problem. Sweet. Okay, well, can you see other questions to do? Um, someone asked, do we pay credits to set any of these? No, you don't pay credits. No, you get credits. That's a whole fun oh and then so somebody asked are we modeling this character off of uh known ones or can we make our own with its own traits i you can do either uh frankly but i would strongly recommend trying to create your own character because um here's the thing and actually this is a really good question because it merits an important point in the answer every other character you know of or the vast majority of them have a storyline we know what happened we know who Jon snow is because we know him from the beginning to you know, being born in this kingdom to his end, you know how um, how his loves end. But what's the problem with that is when you're actually translating that character to a perpetual being, like an INFT. At which point in his evolution are you going to actually crystallize that character? You know, are you going to um, when his arc is resolved? Sometimes when their when their narrative is resolved, they're at their least interesting. So I strongly recommend choosing characters that are either perpetual because they're from TV shows that don't have set endings or characters you create yourself. And characters you create yourself are frankly more your own. Um, and so I would definitely hands down recommend those over characters that are frankly from, uh, from other sources. Someone asked um, a very important question, which is, do we get a wag me Alethea sweater once we train though? <laughs> that, wow, maybe. Do you know that all of the the sweat the sweatshirts are in my office, Julia? <laughs> I've heard that's their that's their new home. home. So Appreciate please, that. It's a massive box. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I think we answered most of these that are super pertinent. pertinent. Um, Unless there's other ones you want to answer, Juliet? Um, yeah, I think we're we're getting most of them now. Um, what if what if we train badly? Can we reset it? Um, yeah, that's that's sort of what we've been talking about in terms of you can go and adjust the personality Legos again. Um, so all opportunities still open there. Can I use a character from 1800s? Use a character from whenever you like. Um, love it to see an 1800s character. That'd be cool. Yeah, um, I think we're set. And other than that, we will hop in the chat into Noah's Ark and answer as many questions as we can. Um, but this was super fun. Sarah, thank you as always, our favorite Alethean celebrity leading us through, making us laugh on a Wednesday morning. Thank you. I had one other thing just to share, which is, uh, let's see, next class, Thursday, December 30th. So that's next week plus one day. Um, I'll be covering filters and appearances. And then somebody in the chat asked me to do an accent. And so I'm gonna leave you with this. It's one word, it's an Australian accent. And here, here it is, ready? <clears throat> Hello, that's it, the end. <laughs> 
I also actually one one final thing. Did you were did we go over homework for this week? Oh my god. Okay, Juliet, this is why uh this is why we keep you around. This is why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> um airtight mind vice. Okay. Um yes, so for this next assignment, this should also be fun and we will be reviewing it, calling out the best ones in the next uh class. I want you to go into the channel, same channel uh, on the Discord. And instead of using the name of the character you described last time, list a bunch of alternative names that sound like what the character might be called. So like if you're last time you chose Forrest Gump, maybe choose a name like Montgomery Judd. Or uh, if you, last time you chose, uh, let's say Dog the Bounty Hunter, maybe choose like uh, Tex uh, the Lonesome like uh <laughs> man hunter <laughs> something in the ilk and then describe their voice um this one it might be harder for people to guess but i just want you to get uh in the mindset of archetypes like what would a person like this be named if not dory might they be named something like um uh instead of dory maybe something like uh barbara you know something where it's just kind of like a a neighbor, a friendly female name you might know. Uh, and then what does their voice sound like? And hopefully people will be able to guess it. If not, don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, post that out in the Discord before next class, which is Thursday of next week, 10 a.m. So they post, they post, do they post the original name? Like, would you post Dory? And then you'd say, but here are the other names for her? Or you, that's no. the guess? Just, just do the alternative name or names, and then okay. people will try to guess the original. Alternative name plus voice description. Yes. Got it. Cool. We will start okay, our Riddle channel once again. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, wow. We made it exactly one hour. Hooray. It's like we planned it. Um, all right. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Talk Julia. Bye, guys. Bye.